Criminal authorities often become heroes of literary works and cinematographic tapes. They are surrounded by a romantic veil of adventurism and risk, which attracts young people, a female audience, and men who love to remember the old days. Mishka Yaponchik is a thief in law whose story was not limited to fraud and hooliganism. He is the leader of the Odessa bandits. Stories about which still do not subside in their homeland. The adventurous life of this man is surrounded by rumors and gossip, because he managed to subjugate the underworld of the city, famous for its dissolute spirit. The biography of the hero is full of adventures and outstanding events. He was born in the center of Moldavanka in 1891, according to the passport. The future celebrity of Odessa was listed as Moisheyakov Volfovich Vinitsky. The Vinitsky family was large and friendly, despite the harsh disposition of its head. Mishka was educated in the synagogue, attending it for several years in a row. The father planned that the son would continue his work, taking up the cart industry, and the mother dreamed that Moisheyakov would devote himself to spiritual service. The boy himself considered both options boring and wanted to build a life differently. Mishka was captivated by social life trips to theaters and restaurants surrounded by lovely ladies. Due to the fact that the available resources were not conducive to such a life, as a teenager he vowed to conquer Odessa. The nationality and origin of the hero played a significant role in his formation. Moldavianka was. Famous for being a place teeming with smuggling, it was not easy to get into the business. Everyone who was involved in it was tied to each other. The bandits, whose refuge this area served, hunted by the fact that, in cooperation with the owners of inns, coachmen, and shopkeepers, they carried out raids that enriched the participants in the transaction. Rumors of crime spread quickly, and the glory of Moldavanka went around. And children playing raiders reinforced the generally accepted opinion. They dreamed of a better life, and those who managed to rise became heroes. Among them was Mishka Yaponchik, who, watching everything, planned cases and calculated individual plans. For the first time, Mishka participated in organized crime at the age of 16. The year 1907 stood in the yard. It was in the flower shop. The next object that the choice of the young robber fell on was rich apartments. The first arrest happened a couple of months later, during a police raid in a brothel. After clarifying the circumstances, the court sentenced Mishka to 12 years in prison. Here, it would seem, the life of the hero should be overshadowed by the prospect of terrible impressions from the prison, the local contingent, and living conditions. But he did not fall into confusion. Vinitsky figured out how to get out ahead of time, and another person served for him for the remaining years. The deception was quickly revealed, but no one wanted to report the police oversight, and the case was hushed up. Mishka at that time decided that it was time to conquer Odessa. At 24, he asked to join the gang of Mayor Gersh, where he later received the nickname Yaponchik. In a short period of time. The man became known as a criminal authority. Having put together his own gang, he kept manufactories and shops at bay. Two years later, the underworld of Odessa considered Mishka the leader, and Mayor Gersh turned out to be an assistant. Thousands of bandits and smugglers united under the leadership of Yaponchik, who had his people everywhere, gave bribes and deftly avoided raids. A criminal syndicate organized by a bandit united groups in the regions of the Russian Empire. He became the first who managed to rally around himself a coalition of enemies of law and justice. Yaponchik's connections were so great that he drew resources from the treasury, and the criminal cartel had a clear structure and hierarchy. With the light hand of a man, a raider code was formed. Which provided for punishments for disobedience and a set of rules regarding robbery activities. Fashionist Yaponchik walked along the main street of the city, accompanied by guards, and accepted bows from those around him. 
an intelligent and prudent person. He was aware of the business and aspects of the business. The personal life of the hero at the same time was not inferior to the professional, a frequenter of opera and literary evenings. The hero was present at social events and maintained friendship with cultural and art figures. For the chic receptions and parties that Yuponchik hosted, he was nicknamed the King in Odessa. The crime boss managed to hold on to power even during the civil war. Cunning and resourcefulness made it possible to assemble a large detachment under the leadership of the raiders, which easily repelled the attacks of those who disagreed with the king of Odessa. Yuponchik was taken neither by Denikin's general Schilling nor by the Bolsheviks. The white guards had to establish relations with him, but the constant tense and conflict situation did not allow anyone to relax. The Bolsheviks resorted to the help of authority in organizing public events. Posters promising peace in the city were often found on the streets with the signature of the leader of the Odessa Mafia. When the time came to show who the true owner of the city was, the Reds decided to oppress Yuponchik and took extreme measures like executions without warning. The hero quickly orientated himself in the current situation and came up with a cunning plan. He joined the ranks of the Red Army. Enough is known about the family of Mishka Yuponchik to make several assumptions about his upbringing and the environment in which the character of the future leader of gangster Odessa was formed. He was born into a family that belonged to the famous Jewish dynasty of Koratichi. From a village in the Kherson province, parents and their children moved to Odessa. Mishka had for brothers and a sister, Abram, Grigory and Yuda died at the front. And Isaac moved to America and died in New York. Yuponchik's sister died in 1919 from graves. Disease. The hero's father died early, but the stern hard worker, who loved booze and a strong word, made the boy's character hardened from childhood. Family values meant a lot to Yuponchik. This was due to his origin and intellectual warehouse, so his wife and children were never denounced in public. The bandit's wife, Celia Averman, was a beautiful woman who bore him a daughter, who was named Ada. The girl was born at the time of the formation of the Ukrainian regiment by Yuponchik. Upon learning of the death of her husband, Celia went abroad with the husband of Yuponchik's sister, in whose arms she found solace. The daughter of a crime boss remained in Odessa to be raised by her mother-in-law. Celia managed to live in India and France. She was constantly looking for ways to pick up her daughter. But everything was unsuccessful. Yaponchik's mother stopped any attempts. Ada died in Baku in 1983 for a long time. Parcels from her mother from France came to her address. Seeley's biography after her departure and subsequent events in the USSR confirmed that her decision t. or escape was the right one. Loud statements about the participation of Mishka Yuponchik in the civil war were provoked by himself, and described the moments when he decided to join the Red Army. The man gathered a regiment of two. Five hundred people and went to the front. Odessans were proud of their brethren, who turned from raiders into soldiers, the Yaponchik regiment was part of the Katovsky Brigade. And the influence of his wards on those who used to be civilians soon seriously worried the leaders of the Red Army. The warlords lured the hero into a trap, and the criminal leader was killed. Yaponchik knew about the plot in advance, and when he was sent for replenishment, prophesying a new rank. He ordered the regiment to return to Odessa without permission. Taking the detachment, he went for replenishment, captured the echelon and sent the train to Odessa. The hero did not reach the city, as there was a traitor among the confidants. He surrendered the commander, and in Vosnesensk a cavalry division arrested the deserters. Yaponchik refused to go into captivity, and was shot dead by Nikifor Ursulov, the commander of the capture squad, the causes of Yaponchik's death were betrayal and two shots in the